G'day. What would it take to solve any computer performance issue in five days? Imagine solving the performance of anything. Operating systems, kernels, web browsers, phones, applications, websites, your company's website. I think websites should load in the blink of an eye. What would it take for us to fix the performance of everything to make that possible? Here's a vision I call Fast by Friday. Any performance issue reported on Monday should be solved by Friday or sooner. Fast by Friday is a vision. It's also a way of thinking. So that if you solve something and it takes a month, instead of that being great, that needs to be faster. You want to be able to do this by Friday in one week. And what changes will you have to make to make that possible? It's a call for action so that we can create the tools and changes to make Fast by Friday possible. It's a methodology which I'll go through to follow, and it's also a practical deadline. My dream has been to completely understand the performance of everything, and now I want to do this in five days. Why this matters. If you look at what happens in performance, Computers get faster, libraries get faster, there's new versions of applications, there's new design patterns for programming. If you take any given computer-based product, maybe that's your company's website, it could be a microservice or something, you would expect every year things to improve. And I've mocked up a hypothetical graph here, and it's shaped similar to Moore's Law. But in reality, I often see performance look like this, where there can be months or years where performance improvements stall. There are two problems. The first is where bottlenecks aren't found in time, and it may take months and maybe even years to find out what was holding back performance for that product. The second problem is where there's also not enough time, but to properly properly analyze all of the different software, hardware, and tunable options that you can employ. And I know of some major products where this graph is so similar because of the years where the developers didn't have time, the operators didn't have time to test out all of those new hardware options, all of those new software things that you can do and tunables that you can set. And years went by where the performance of the product didn't really improve. The problem is computers are getting increasingly complex. I've drawn a diagram here of showing how computers and now there's so many more things. There's accelerators, FPGAs, TPUs, DPUs. We're using GPUs more often and IPUs now. The company I work for is creating many of these, but software is actually even worse than this. There are many more layers and things we have to worry about with containers and service meshes and so on that we need to debug. Because of this complexity, performance issues can go and solve for weeks, months, or even years. But the other problem is that product decisions can miss improvements as the analysis and tuning, the evaluation of should we go with this hardware or that hardware, this tunable or that tunable, this programming language or that programming language, the analysis takes too long and the evaluation takes too long. A common scenario of product vendors, and I've, I'm working at one now and I've worked at one in the past, is where you feel your product is probably the fastest, but there's likely some configuration or tunable error but it's the final week of the customer eval. You have to make it fast by Friday, otherwise the customer will kick you out. And if you think about it, your company has invested in building what's probably the fastest product. But the problem isn't that investment. It's the speed to analyze it and make sure it's tuned and configured properly in a very complicated environment. Why this matters Timely performance analysis allows you to pick faster and more efficient options. That's great for the environment, less cycles, energies, and carbon. It's good for innovation. This rewards real investment in engineering and rewards engineering jobs. 
And of course, it's good for companies, less compute expense and end users. So how are we going to make things fast by Friday? For definitions, for any computer performance issue, by issues I mean bottlenecks, evaluations, or any performance activity. And solved by Friday, I really mean the root causes known. Sometimes to actually push a change, there are some other things that can't be sped up, but getting to the point where it is solved in one week. Here's the proposed agenda, and I'll go through each of these. Before you start, everything has to work on Monday so that you can hit the ground running with performance analysis. Critical analysis tools, which I call crisis tools, must be pre-installed. And if you're in an enterprise operating system, like an enterprise Linux distro, these should be there out of the box. So on Linux, there'll be things like PROC-PS, SysStat, Linux tools common for perf, BCC tools, and BPF trace. Stack tracing and symbols should work on day one, and that's for the kernel, for libraries, and applications. I can tell you many times I've helped with performance issues, we lose the first two weeks just getting all of that stuff turned on before we can start the analysis. This should all be done beforehand, preparation. Tracing, host and distributed tracing must work. The performance engineers must already have access to root via SSH on the host so that they can run all of the different privileged analysis tools. A functional diagram of the system must be known so that the performance engineers know what they're looking at. And it helps if the source code is available. I've put the, what I feel is the current industry status for each of these steps. And I feel at the moment we're doing very badly for this kind of preparation. And so when I jump onto new service and help new customers, there's just so many steps. It takes us weeks before we can really begin diving deep. And this should be done beforehand. So it's now Monday, you can start your analysis. The first thing is, I like to start with the problem statement method. I didn't come up with this, this has been used in the industry for decades. I remember it was used by the field engineers at Sun Microsystems, and I published a, a generic problem statement methodology in my systems performance book. And this is something you can do over the phone to figure out if the problem is real and to try to figure out the magnitude of the problem. What makes you think there is a performance problem? Has the system ever performed well? What changed recently? Can the problem be expressed in terms of latency or runtime? And so on. The next methodology that's great to start with is static performance tuning. That's where you're looking at the system without load. And you can do this on an idle system. You check all the software and hardware components, the versions, past error, and their configuration. And I cover doing that in systems performance as well. Because why get into all the complicated intricacies of a dynamic workload when it may simply be a configuration error? Once those are out of the way, then you can get into load versus implementation. A lot of performance issues happen because there's new unexpected load is happening. And that's usually solved by basic monitoring and line charts. I've given this four out of five because we're usually pretty good at these steps. On Tuesday, before lunch, I would start with a recent issue checklist. And that's where you want to go through the last or the most common 12 issues that you see and check if they're present, just because it's an it's a, a effective and practical use of time. To do that recent issue checklist, often you need some new tools for this. So you can do ad hoc, hoc checks to see if you're experiencing something. I should also note that these kind of things are being automated by AI these days, AI auto tuners who can go through much longer lists quickly and see if you're hitting those issues and then automatically apply the tuning. Uh, I work for Intel and Intel has one product called Granulate for that. Once you pass the recent issues, I think practically to solve any performance issue by Friday, you have to narrow down because it's impossible to deep dive on everything. And this is where I see we need new tools to exonerate components and to show that they aren't 
a problem and you can take them off the operating table and focus on what is more likely to be the problem. Once we've created these tools, you can turn them into GUIs of traffic lights. And these tools can also include experiments, microbenchmarks. So now I'm talking about needing new tools. And the current, current industry status is not great. But eBPF is a superpower that we can use to answer any software performance question. And we can do this in production without restarting anything in situ and immediately. The current eBPF tools, I created a lot of these to support later, deeper methodologies, things like workload characterization, latency analysis, the use method, and so on. And so the, those are the tools that end in Snoop for doing the event logs, top, stat, count, slower, and so on. But for Fast by Friday, I see we need new tools. We need elimination tools so that we can narrow down and eliminate things where the problem isn't. And so I'd call them something health or something diagnosis. So you could have a TCP health and you might, might have an ext4 health tool and so on. I also think these should be open source and in the target code repo. They should not be in the current BCC or BPF trace repositories or proprietary. So to be specific, a Linux subsystem health tool should be in Linux, just like the unit tests. And it should be ideally written by the developers who best understand their own code. These are going to be complicated tools to write to exonerate systems. By putting them in the repository, they're open source. Everyone can build upon them. And they'll also get maintained in lockstep with the target code. Wednesday, profiling. CPU flame graphs and off CPU flame graphs these actually solve most performance issues, as it's a great way to see, in terms of the de developer's code, what the CPUs are doing and what you're blocked on. It does need that pre-Monday preparation, so you need to get stacks and symbols to work. eBPF is a big help here, because with CPU flame graphs, eBPF can be more efficient, because we can do in-kernel aggregations. And we can also do custom eBPF stack walkers and walk through run times and do other things. Off CPU flame graphs, they're not really practical without eBPF because you have to trace scheduler events or do other things. And eBPF allows us to make that more efficient and practical. Thursday. If you get to Thursday, it's a difficult issue. It's, it's not one of the recent issues. It's not a simple issue of load. It didn't show up in the flame graphs. So now it's time to drill down on latency and to break up the operations of an application into subcomponents and keep drilling down to find the source of the issue. And you want latency histograms from different layers for comparison, or heat maps so you can see latency over time, a visualization that I invented previously. Latency outliers, because you may just care about them and not really the modes. So you can drill down to the origin. Logs and event tracing are great for getting down into those difficult issues as well. You may, there may be patterns of events that cause the issue. And then finally, critical path analysis. At this point, it can be for multi-threaded tracing or distributed tracing, but that's where you want to look at how, the requ how requests have been processed by the application or program, or whatever it is, and to find out what's the blocking path that's stopping things in parallel from making forward progress. This is another area where eBPF is a great help. So eBPF tools, the, the disk tools give latency distributions or histograms. There's the slower tools to, to look at outliers. There's the snoop tools for doing the custom event logs. BPF tracing, do whatever you want. And for critical path analysis for distributed tracing in the future, when faster U probes, when that work has been done, which is not currently done, I see it would be practical that we can trace library calls and calls between API endpoints without even restarting anything, without having to instrument the code just by using eBPF automatically. I wouldn't do that today because we have to do work with uprobes and the overhead is too high. But that's another exciting area where eBPF is going to make a huge difference. And then finally, Friday. 
At this point, you've likely solved pretty much all the performance issues. And you've got flame graphs, and there's not really an obvious issue there. You've got event logs, there's not really an obvious issue there, and you've, you've used eBPF to instrument the stack. But there can still be more performance wins to find. And this is the area of looking at efficiency. This is a largely unsolved problem. I've done some of this in the past, where, we look, where I'm looking at cycles per request, and nowadays carbon per request. One approach that actually worked well was a long time ago, I worked on a storage appliance and it supported different protocols. And I was able to micro benchmark it with the same request across those protocols. And I've got a mock up table here to show the example killer cycles per request. I did this for all sorts of different types of workloads. And the results matched my gut feeling based on the code bases, then maturity to show that which implementations were more CPU efficient than other implementations. Once you have something like that, you could look at it in, in my example, say, well, MFS v3, that's much more efficient than everything else, certainly CIFs. And so CIFs could go maybe four or five times faster. You can see how now making decisions and inference based on efficiency on purely the comparative data. That's great if it's possible, but sometimes it's not possible. You don't have things to compare it to. And I think that's another opportunity for more eBPF tools and also doing modeling and theory. And there's, there's a lot of work in this area. And to use faster algorithms to improve efficiency as well. So big old notation and looking for wins there. After the week of analysis, case studies and retrospective. I try, I try as much as possible to share things on my blog and share things in conference talks to help out other people. And so document things as a case study, have it on your internal Jira, Wiki, Gists, external blog posts and talks if you can, you can redact them. It's great if you can include flame graphs because sometimes you can solve performance issues years later that you didn't spot at the time. And if you keep seeing the same issue over, over and over, add it to Tuesday's recent issue checklist. And for retrospectives, how do you debug it faster by Friday if it took longer than Friday? And I mentioned earlier, this is a new way of thinking. Previously, when you solve some difficult issue and it took a month, you'd be happy you solved the issue. I would, I would always beat myself up and think, oh, why did it take a month? Why couldn't I have done that in one week? And so Fast by Friday helps communicate and encourages this way of thinking. It should only take a week. Computers are pretty complicated. I'm not saying Fast by 5 p.m. or Fast by lunchtime, because there is a lot of things to check. But I think we can do it in one week. We're going to need new tools. We're going to have to come up with, follow this methodology and, and come up with, with ways to, to eliminate areas, and AI will be a help as well. But I think it's a reasonable target. My current industry ratings, we're not currently good at this. It can take, it can take many weeks, it can take many months to solve issues. But eBPF is essential for making this dream a reality, being able to solve the performance of anything, improve everything, make websites load in the blink of an eye. So my takeaways are, Fast by Friday, any computer performance issue reported on Monday should be solved by Friday or sooner. eBPF is essential for this as it's production safe and allows all sorts of new tools to be created and used. And this will take all of us many years to accomplish. There'll be operating system changes necessary, such as supporting frame pointers and other stack walkers, kernel support, new tools, methodologies, but this is a goal, a realistic goal that we can work on and accomplish for all of those benefits, for the environment, for innovation, for companies and for end users. Thank you very much for watching and I look forward to helping you make your products fast by Friday.